before we start, I would like to, uh, uh, so we have a lot of 62 participants now, Magdalena. And uh, uh, before we start our formal, we would like to show our Pakistani friends your, your national anthem. Uh, because I, <laughs> I, I saw it yesterday and really loved it. And uh, so it will be one and a half minutes and the translation of English will be there. And there are very good words written in the anthem. I loved it. So as, a, as, a, as an inspiration for, and as a sort of motivation for, for love. And uh, I would like to share this. So please uh, join me in listening. Uh, this for one and a half minute and then we'll start our program. <laughs> much and uh, welcome back. So it talks about independence, it talks about love and it's great. So I would be giving over the control to Professor Gonzalez and Magdalena and my dear friends in Pakistan. So Professor Gonzalez, we met together several times in the Academy of Management. Is it Professor Gonzalez? Yes, and it is. I, uh, Gonzalo, is it? just call me Gonzalo. <laughs> okay, Gonzalo and we met at uh, Effectuation Conference, and he is a strong believer in effectuation theory. He's a professor of engineering and effectuation and entrepreneurship. He's a consultant to family businesses in Chile and South America. And you go anywhere in South America and just shout, Gonzalo, and you will find, you will hear somebody saying, okay, yes. So uh, Gonzalo will be talking about uh, effectuation and the mind maps along with our friend, uh, Professor Dr. Magdalena. So over to you, we'll be listening for you for the next 45, 50 minutes. And I would like to welcome the students from Chile and the people from Argentina and from Pakistan. And uh, just- You need to make them ad admin host for screen sharing. Okay, let me make them host. Uh, can, you, can you do it, Abdullah? You know how to yeah, do it? Yeah, please. Uh, Abdullah will be doing it. In the meantime, I, I just- host, you, can only, you can only do- Okay, I just- Magdalena, I want to show the pictures of our center. This is the Center for Entrepreneurship. This is the map of our country. Uh, this is the no, you're not showing it, Rahid. You need because to show you're not showing the, the screen. The screen. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. And let me just quickly show you my, uh, just few, in few minutes, we will, uh, so you can, I think. Uh, so this is the picture of our center, the Center for Entrepreneurial Development. You can see it now? Yeah, beautiful. So this beautiful. is the Center for Entrepreneurial Development at IBA Karachi. IBA is the oldest business school in South Asia. It was developed 60 years ago. This is the map of the country, 200 million population. Uh, we are here Karachi at the, at the coast. The capital is here. So it's a very big country. This is the picture of various activities we have a woman entrepreneurship program. Uh, we have a various conferences. We have international summer school that takes place every year. 
and people from Brazil and South America also have joined us. We have agriculture entrepreneurship, mangoes and fish entrepreneurship. In 2017, we won the USASB award for entrepreneurship. This is Heidi Neck from, from Babson, Safaraz Mia from New York. And we have started an online course online course on entrepreneurial mind and people from all over the world are in taking to a place and we are looking forward from people from Chile to join us in the next four. So that was a quick introduction to our center and I would like to go back and so that we can start. I would like to give access to my friend Professor Gonzalez. I'm making you a co-host. So Gonzalez, you are the- yes, excellent. Excellent. So, okay, very good, very good. Um, do you do you get to hear me clearly? Yes. Yes, clear. Okay, very good. Excellent. So okay, then I'll share the presentation that Magdalena and I we have uh, prepared uh, for today for you. Mm, I. Put the image, the kind image uh, you choose for us, uh, where Magdalena, Magdalena is, of, is of course very young, but I look younger <laughs> than what I am now, so <laughs> that was nice. Uh, so well, let's start by, by saying uh, our appreciation. We are grateful of this opportunity to talk to you and to share with you our learning experiences and, and and we're also very keen on learning more about Pakistan. And um, uh, I am a real admirer of what you, Shahid, uh, and your colleagues, you have achieved at the Center for of Entrepreneurship in Pakistan. I'm really impressed. Uh, so it is a real pleasure uh, to, to, to start with this. Uh, so, okay, let's move on. Um, we will be uh, shifting our presentation between Magdalena and I. So I will start and then uh, give the floor to Magdalena and then take it back later on. Okay, this is the, the title we have for the presentation, the effectuation and mind maps. Uh, I would like to remind you uh, that if you have any question, you may use perhaps the, 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 the chat space uh, to, to, to get some questions so we can you yeah. can take so them at the end. Box and I will read it for you, okay, later on. Excellent, fantastic, fantastic. That's great. Uh, okay. So we have called it effectuation and mind maps. Uh, we are very well aware that uh, the great Sara Sarasbati, our mutual friend with Shahid, uh, has been there in, in Pakistan speaking about effectuation before. So we are trying to, to take advantage of that previous knowledge to try to give a, a broad view around effectuation, innovation, and the entrepreneurship in a historical perspective, taking advantage of Magdalena's uh, deep knowledge of the subject, and then get back to some stories of entrepreneurs and, and reflect about how mind maps or mental models can be articulated uh, with an effectual uh, purpose uh, and capability. So let's move on. This is a mystery <laughs> image uh, to introduce uh, briefly what is entrepreneurship. Um, Saras, uh, goes on in a recent book that is being launched uh, just today, in fact, uh, in the US, um, arguing that we don't need to, to, to define very precisely entrepreneurship, that each researcher may, may want to, to propose his or her own uh, definition. So this is the one we're using uh, that is based in Herb Simon, Sarah's Tudor. So what is entrepreneurship? Uh, from an entrepreneurial 
point of view or from a historical perspective, let's say, uh, we will call entrepreneurship uh, designing new ventures to refresh environments and lives. But as we are speaking on a historical perspective, or from a historical perspective, on a societal scale. This is the concept of entrepreneurship, of entrepreneurship we will be using. Designing new ventures. There's an organization, maybe commercial or, or no profit, it could be also, uh, to change the environment and our own lives and the lives of other people as well. So who are entrepreneurs? And as Sarah says, uh, what entrepreneurs do? Well, entrepreneurs, uh, we're calling founders who through purposeful venture creation are able to innovate changing socioeconomic paradigms of their time. They're able to deal and get over uncertainty on what to do next. They interact flexibly with stakeholders to engage them into action. And then they play with ambiguity, with goal conflicts and with contingencies. And the last but not least, they start with their own means and they're able to surpass their own, their own limits. So, this is what we will have in mind, in mind when we speak about entrepreneurs, people innovating to changing the way we live, play and work, dealing uh, with uncertainty in an effective way, interacting very flexibly with their stakeholders, playing with the ambiguity with different goals and uh, leveraging conflict uh, contingencies and overall starting with their own means and surpassing their own limits. And this in a historical perspective. That's why we keep the word of the time. So I know that the, the Center of Entrepreneurship of uh, Karachi uh, congregates, convenes a number of very relevant, very uh, willing um, uh, entrepreneurs and students wanting to learn more about entrepreneurship. So those are the questions I would like you, for you to, to keep in mind while we speak. Uh, what story are you writing on your own now and here? What story of your life will endure? And what could be called your life's work. All those are entrepreneurial questions that is very important to keep in mind for what comes next. So we're speaking about entrepreneurs, but with a scale impact. It's not just one day after the other. You may be living a life one day after the other one, but the impact of what you are doing, of what you are achieving, uh, will have transcendence, will transcend over time. So let's take now um, a step back and reflect on how we have gone through scale impact in our human history. And I will, I will pass in, 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 in one minute to Magdalena, uh, to present the different uh, ways uh, how uh, uh, impact is achieved, has been achieved in life. Magdalena, all yours. Thank you, Gonzalo. Thank you to the center for this lovely invitation. First of all, I want to start with your question. What story have wrote our species, our homo sapiens, what, what story we have wrote. And that story 
it always depends on the history context. We have to know that. So I'm going to talk about a long view of history since uh, the Homo sapiens is in the earth to understand the four revolutions. Which revolutions? The four revolutions that determinate paradigms, that change paradigms, that put a mindset of entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship. Because it's very important to understand the type of modus operandi of the venture. So let's go back and um, see a little bit about this revolution and entrepreneurship that it's in this heroes of history. Now you listen to me better because in the chat said that the voice is not clear. I don't know if I. Okay. Perfect. So the first uh, revolution that is very important is cognitive revolution. The cognitive revolution, it means that some, in some part of the Homo sapiens, it changes the language. About 7,000 before Christ, something happened in the mind, in the brain of Homo sapiens that put another type of language more abstract, more complex, not, not just to communicate concrete situations, you know, a language that can uh, imagine it. That it's a very important thing because that kind of language do the great separation. What is the great separation? The Homo sapiens is not a um, study just about biology. The Homo sapiens could create history, culture. So what had the, this language that it's very, very characteristic? Um, it's flexible, it's complex, it's abstract. The Homo sapiens generate a spiritual relationship with his environment, not only to survive. So, it's the most someone is talking. Carry on. I, I, I don't know. No. Okay. So, what's the idea? Is the most important theory that why on sapiens overpassed to the other kind of hominities. It's very important to understand this, to understand the kind of entrepreneurial that set the mind of the first, um, the first step of Homo sapiens. Gonzalo, the second revolution and the most important economic revolution of all time is the agricultural revolution. The first, the most important in economic field, it's the digital revolution that we are living now, that we're living in this digital revolution. It's easier for entrepreneurs to make innovations to communicate innovation. There are more possibilities because it's a real-time communication. Who are the entrepreneurs of this area? Who are the entrepreneurs who have the five uh, characteristics that say go silent introduction? Maybe Steve Jobs, job, the most important uh, 
the man that uh, found Microsoft, the all the, the the students even that have invented apps. But the most important thing is that it's more easier thanks to internet to generate more kind of entrepreneurs. So the invitation is to start, the invitation is to take advantage of this area. And Gonzalo, please tell us yes. who is this man? <laughs> okay, uh, um, can you listen to me? Yes, we can clearly listen to you, Gonzalo. Uh, no, it's mute now. It's it's mute. Uh, your your mic is mute, Gonzalo. Okay, now it's okay. Yes, yeah, okay. okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, I will take over for, from Magdalena for a while. Uh, while the, the communication is not good, I I'd like her to to come back to tell us about some of the cases. But but let, let, we will show. But I will move on. Well. This gentleman, Alfred North Whitehead, a very distinguished uh, mathematician and philosopher, said that the greatest invention of 19th century was the invention of the method of invention itself. In that sense, uh, as Magdalena has been showing, inventions were all the way of our history. And also entrepreneurs, we don't know their name. We know, of course, the name of James Watt, uh, Watt, who 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 made the, the Watt, uh, who made possible the 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 energy and then the industrial revolution. Uh, we know, of course, the name of the first fathers of the internet, of the the fathers of the digital uh, revolution. But there are so many uh, unknown, <laughs> hidden heroes and 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 inventors and entrepreneurs. So we would like to make the, the to, to, to make the step uh, from invention into entrepreneurship. And we will be showing some invent, inventors slash entrepreneurs uh, during the history who have all, like in the first uh, revolutions that Magdalena has shown, uh, as uh, as have changed the way we think, the way we work, and the way we play. So let's move to entrepreneurs and their histories. I remind you of the questions we keep we have to to keep in mind uh, in this speech because those are the questions that we'll, we will be asking to the cases of the entrepreneurs we have brought uh, to this talk. James Watt. Uh, it's so interesting the way how he talks. He says, I, he says, he said, I sell here, sir, what all the world desires to have, power. Of all things in life, there is nothing more foolish than inventing. So we have the five signs of what an entrepreneur is. Changing, innovating, changing the way we think. Dealing with uncertainty, this inflection point that is shown uh, in, the, in the image. Uh, if you allow me, I will be, I will, Try yes, to use the marker, use the marker. Exactly, exactly, yes. Use the, use the marker to say this is uncertainty, dealing with the inflection points, right? Uh, this is changing the way we think. Yes. Sorry for my for my circles, <laughs> square <fine>. circles. <laughs> there are innovation. <laughs> yeah, innovation. <laughs> uh, mobilizing uh, stakeholders. Of course, he had to invent a full industry. The Science Museum in London uh, is a great uh, showcase of all the accomplishments of James Watt. I was there uh, for second, third time uh, last year and always loved to go there. Uh, dealing uh, with ambiguity, 
and with gold conflict. And the last one uh, is starting with what you have, working with your skill and knowing and respecting your own limits. So we see in the history of this gentleman, uh, those five aspects that in our opinion, in our perspective, define what an entrepreneur is. As I said before, this is uh, directly based on the work of Herb Simon, and of course uh, from some Sarah's body as well. But it's our own proposition of a definition. It's a joint work with, with, with Magdalena. Uh, just to share, Herbert Simon was a Nobel Prize winner, and he was a supervisor of Sarah Sarasoti. So exactly, yeah. Thank you for reminding. And he's an incredible figure. He's, he's like a Renaissance kind of man because he was the father of the artificial intelligence, uh, one of the father of the cognitive uh, psychology um, in the decision making. Uh, well, he won the, the the Turing Prize and the Nobel Prize for for that as well. And uh, so really a, 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 an amazing, an amazing figure who writes about physics or biology or social science or the science of the artificial, as he, as he named the science of invention. So he's an amazing figure. Yes, thank you, Jose. Here is another one, Andre, Andrew Carnegie, who was born in Scotland, uh, and then moved in the US to become one of the richest men on earth. Um, um, who, who said that he was trying to make the world in some way better than the one uh, it found at the beginning. And that this is to have a noble motive in life. So all his uh, amazing achievement in industry is still, uh, and just incidentally, it is so interesting uh, to, to have in mind uh, to have in mind that Saras Sarasvati studied at Carnegie Mellon University, where Simon was teaching a university that counted with the with the that counted with the with the the, the award and the all the uh, all the 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 the, the donation from uh, from uh, from Andrew Carnegie. So yes, this is why he's so relevant even in our case. And also he was able to change the way how life is seen, particularly by being a great donor in education, uh, deal with the uncertainty of a consolidating a fragmented, fragmented industry, had to deal with so many uh, stakeholders uh, was able to manage uh, under ambiguity and, and, and goal conflict and was able to surpass his own limits. Let's move then into another one. Uh, just beside the border, <laughs> at the other side, and, uh, there is uh, Mr. Tata. Yes. <laughs> the, we know the Tatas. And I also know the Totos. You know the Totos as well? <laughs> uh, they're pretty popular, pretty famous in, in, in our part of the world. Yeah, well, even in, in our country, there is Tata uh, software services, so many other services that are, are so, so su su successful in that sense. And uh, Mr. S uh, Tata said that in free enterprise, uh, community is not just another stakeholder in business, uh, but it is in fact the very purpose of its existence. We can say this is incredible. If we look at the declaration of the main CEOs of the main American corporation last year, at the end of last year, in October or September, they said that the purpose of business goes much beyond, way beyond our profits. And Mr. Tata said that so much earlier, 200 years or, or even earlier, okay? Uh, she also said, if you cannot make it greater, at least preserve it. 
Do not let things slide. Go on doing your work or our, our work and increasing it. And, but if you cannot, do not lose what you have already done. So this last sentence is connected with, the, with what you have, the bird in hand principle. Uh, it's also, he recognizes that there must be ambiguity, uh, that he's not alone, that's why he's speaking to other people, and he's recognizing the inflection points associated with uncertainty. And of course, all those, he was able uh, to speak about purpose before the word purpose appear in, in, in management uh, or in entrepreneurship. So again, we see the five concepts there. Wonderful. Gonzalo, do you have a paper on this, five principles that you have? Uh, we're, we're, we're working on a, on a paper still oh. uh, in, in Spanish. So we're, but now, um, I love to have this sharing <laughs> in the middle oh. of the conversation, Shahi, with you, it's fantastic. Uh, what we're doing, we're, we're, we're trying to bounce these ideas with different audiences and with different colleagues. So we would love to, uh, I, I will send you the, the five principles uh, with more detail uh, to, to know your, your reaction and your colleagues and, and how we may think in, in one day in an in academic uh, a workshop or something like that with our colleagues uh, perhaps there or here to, to discuss mass, more about this and, and, and learn together, okay? Uh, Thomas Alba Edison. Uh, said there are no rules here. Uh, we're trying to accomplish something. So, on what sense, uh, he's speaking about other people as well and changing the way we work. Just because something doesn't do what you're planning to do doesn't mean it is useless. This is an effect, it's a complete effectual concept, okay? Because the concept of acceptation that they call uh, Nicholas Adieu and Sarasvati, um, the point of uh, using uh, an object for another purpose is very effective indeed. He also uh, made a provocation in terms of saying, if we did all the things we're really capable, capable of doing, we would literally astound ourselves. This again, again, is the possibility of invention, innovation, and creation. Um, another one, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. They gave up. So I think all those concepts are ways of uh, managing failure and achieving success, even when it is unlikely. And this is the magic about the fluctuation, that you can redefine uh, success. So you can really escape from the doom or the, uh, of failure on, on the way how you work. So again, we have those five principles uh, going on. Um, just a word for Magdalena, who is there. Uh, Magdalena, I would suggest if you, uh, to perhaps, perhaps you may try to, to connect you with your cell phone. Uh, that, that may help you. Uh, if, you, have a, you know, if you have an element like, like this, perhaps uh, you, may, you may use it uh, to connect with your, with your cell phone. And you may have better voice quality just in case you have one around, okay? Okay, uh, I will move on. Coco Chanel, I think Magdalena should speak about Coco Chanel. Can you try Magdalena, if, you, your, if your sound is better, it's doing better? Here, I you can hear me. Okay. Yes. Yes. Chanel, it's, uh, 
Yes, please try. entrepreneur that conquers old fashion. Uh, look at the phrases, Elias is when the inside is as beautiful as the outside. So um, it's uh, great to have uh, women in very, in the, in the first time of the, of the 20th century, has very good entrepreneur. Uh, entrepreneur. Uh, I don't know if the Hello? Oh, I have a... We can hear you, we can hear you, we can hear you. You can hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. You're talking about the Coco Channel, Fashion Fades. The, the, it's, it's the fashion, a, a great women entrepreneur. But follow this next slide. Are you there? Your voice. Oh. Like a TV. Yes, a big entrepreneur. Oh. <laughs> I'm a very good example of entrepreneurship. You know this? So congratulations. Oh. Across the across South America, amazing. Yeah. He's very famous. Very famous. Very respected for, the, oh, for wow. his work. Um, so perhaps you can tell us more about him, Shahid. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Dr. Barry Khan is from Karachi, and he's one of the, um, he did an amazing job uh, while he was a young doctor, uh, he was studying in the school, he started uh, collecting blood for, for people who couldn't afford, and then, uh, he, and then he became a heart surgeon, and one day an old person came, a, a poor person came to him with his daughter, the doctor was ill and having a heart problem and uh, he diagnosed and he, he asked that person to come for an operation and the next day he came that please can you give me some tablets so that I can give my daughter so that she can die. He said why what are you saying? He said I cannot afford this operation I don't have enough money so can you help me and make her die and then Dr. Bari was full of pain and he said, oh, I need to do something for the poor of my people of the, of the country. And then he convinced some people and he got an old building. And then eventually that became an interesting hospital, Indus Hospital. This is one of the unique hospitals in the world, which offers medical facility free of charge to anyone. Great. So Dr. Bari says 95% of, of my country, the people, they cannot afford high quality medical facility. So, and he has got such a, such a credibility that the people from all over the world are giving him charities and helping him. He's making a big hospital. It's a paperless hospital. And uh, he himself lives a very simple life. He could, have a, he could have made a lot of money, but this is a very interesting story from Pakistan. And he mm -hmm. has opened many hospitals in the country and he's planning to go to Africa and other countries as well. And I will send your message to him that Chile is waiting for you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, as you say, here we have how he changed the way uh, we think. Poor, uh, poor people cannot have quality health. He challenge that and change the way. Uh, I can imagine all the uncertainty he have to deal and get over on the way to build this how he required to assist them from other people, donors or other people. Uh, how perhaps different people wanted different goals, perhaps to make money at the hospital, but he was able to, to maintain his line and at the same time uh, go beyond what a, a, a person alone can do. So we see all the five elements of a, of a, of a good entrepreneur uh, of, uh, of scale impact. Remember, we're speaking about entrepreneurs of our time uh, on that sense. Uh, there's one we're missing here um, with Magdalena, uh, Muhammad Yunus, uh, that, is in our, that was in our, in our thoughts. Uh, we, 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 we really, it, 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 he escaped from our mind to put it here, but he's 
really deserves to be here with the bank, with the Grameen Bank, the, the Bank for the Poor, who has done more or less the same that Dr. Abdul Barikan on the, on the financial services system. And I would like to, to leave to Magdalena to say the last one because I know she's a favorite of hers. And again, it's close to your home, right? You have done a lot of research about our country. Great. <laughs> well, it's been a, a pleasure. of Asia and Middle East. But, uh, well, for me, it's one of the greatest women uh, nowadays. Activist female education and the youngest Nobel Prize. So, why? Well, we have to learn a lot from Malala. And uh, actually, in my courses, uh, my students have to read her and analyze to know the importance of the um, female battle that she has been uh, putting struggling so i i think she is uh, an amazing amazing girl i don't know if you if you want to tell us that you maybe know better malala uh, some lessons to chile uh, i'm sure there are great lessons uh from from malala uh, does anyone do you know uh shahid do you know a little bit more about Malala, you can, can, you can tell us? Can you tell yes, us so this is a young lady, she, she survived. She was working on child education and she was writing a diary in the mountain areas of Pakistan in Sabak. And she's a symbol of uh, child education, woman education. She is a symbol of uh, the role of women in developing, society, in developing a society. So I think she's a role model for our young kids that how important education is and how important social services. So she is raising money and spending and helping schools to be built. And I think she brought a good fame to Pakistan as she got the Nobel Prize. So, so it's in a way it made us uh, known in a good way across the world. And uh, I think we're looking forward that it's great to see in here that you are, uh, you are aware of some things that good things happening in Pakistan. And that brings <laughs> Together and countries together. Thank Great. you. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, again, we can see that Malala in some way challenged uh, the way how female education was perceived in some places, right? Um, and how difficult it may have been for, for, for her and, and her partners uh, to deal with the, the ambiguity, with the uncertainty, sorry. Uh, the, of course, the need to, to engage, to enlist and roll others in this, uh, under this purpose. Uh, and again, deal with ambiguity, uh, with different uh, uh, global conflict, and to go beyond their own means. Uh, let's imagine that she was the youngest person to have the Nobel Prize. So it's a real amazing achievement. Uh, that, that, that is very highly appreciated around the world. That's why it makes so much sense, this word of the former prime minister, right, of Pakistan, um, that she has become the most prominent citizen of the country. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very impressed by this because I thought that you, Shahid, were the most uh, prominent citizen uh, in the country. So I know you have competition. <laughs> yes, exactly. We are just beginners and I hope uh, these people who are listening to you and from Pakistan and Chile, they will, they will do amazing things in the years to come. Young people who are listening, they are the future of our world. And uh, my Bina al Haq is writing that, and Tahar Hussain, there's a lady, Arfa Karim in Lahore. She came up with a very, she was one of the youngest Microsoft uh, specialists. She died very early. So the, we have a very, very big IT tower in Lahore on her name, Arifa Karim Tower. Uh, we have that and so be now luck thank you very much uh, she's from london and she's listening to you people are listening to you from london as well ah, that's so good <laughs> okay uh let's move on then so i would like now to try to focus more 
on the way how we think. And for this, we need to reflect a little bit deeper, uh, put after all this inspiration to, to, to look a, bit, a little bit deeper in how we think and take a more reflexive perspective. And there we put this idea of that we don't know exactly how things are in reality. We just know uh, what we construct internally uh, about reality in the way how we interpret this reality. So I would like in the next uh, uh, part of the presentation to, to take you step by step into the five effectuation principles, but with this perspective. So uh, we wouldn't be following the same principles that I'm sure your, your, your students and entrepreneurs uh, know well because of the great work you've been doing, uh, developing this uh, concept of knowledge in, in Pakistan. You and, 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 and uh, your, 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 one of your wife that, that I met in, in, in Berlin, of course, I know the work you're doing, uh, but I would like to refresh or um, rephrase perhaps, so, or at least reflect, let's say, about the five principles from the point of view of the interpretation of reality. So let's move on. If I may, okay. The first step, I would call it accept reality. This is of course the bird in hand principle. Instead of pursuing, uh, going uh, behind an ideal goal, uh, it is better in that sense, or it's more practical with an entrepreneurial mindset uh, to accept, accept reality um, and sorry, to accept reality. And there are some action questions that I have put here with, with, with Magdalena uh, in terms of asking, who are you? Where are you? Uh, normally in effectuation, we speak of who are you? Who are you uh, uh, whom do you know? <laughs> and, and what do you have? But I also think, particularly reflecting about the experience of this amazing entrepreneurship you're developing in Pakistan. Uh, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that you, you're able to, to start entrepreneurship with $10, with $15 or $50, and even with less than that. Shahid, am I yeah. right? Exactly. So money, uh, money uh, it can be as less as $5, $10, it's, yes. But this, you were able, uh, I assume, to discover a new principle, I would say, and I would call it oh, part of the first principle, in fact, to be correct, where you are. If you're in Pakistan, if you're in Chile, you are in a place uh, that the ethos of the people belonging to that area, the characteristic of the, of the, of the region uh, have many things to say. So, of course, the, 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 develop, the development of effectuation uh, came out of the US, even if it was a, an Indian lady, an Indian professor, uh, Saras, who developed that, that was more or less context free up to some point. But I think the where, the location is so relevant. And if we take Simon and also Saras, they speak about locality to be local, and contingency. And locality has a lot to do with where you are. So I think that's so relevant. And I think the, 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 the success story of your entrepreneurial center uh, is a showcase in that sense. It's exactly, and my friends are reminding in the chat box, our Urdu poet, Iqbal, who did his PhD from Germany, he used to say the same thing which Sarah says, not to have money is a resource not to have money, if you, have, if you are in the right context. If you are in the right context, as you said, where you are, 
तो ही से अपनी दुनिया आप पैदा कर अगर जिंदों में है इफ यू आर अलाइव देन इफ यू आर अलाइव देन यू डू समिंग यू कैन डू समिंग प्लीज क्या यू Yes, that is absolutely like that, like like you say, and so start with what you have, and 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 I like to add to that: act here and now. We can now start whatever we want, according with the next principle that we will be discussing, of course. Ah, uh, so we can create the new from the existing. So as you said, this is very context intensive. action that's why the word uh, i see as so relevant particularly in emerging uh, markets or countries where you uh, 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 and us <laughs> we are right let's move to the second one uh, so i just to get back to to i just want to stress reality in this the acceptance of reality now is the side where you are really again prepare to lose so of course this is the concept of affordable loss instead of the expected return that we learn uh normally in the economic classes so what are the action questions what can you what sorry what can you afford to lose in terms of cash five dollar that may be okay in some context time energy perhaps your reputation Uh, it may be a, a, a risky move uh, up to some uh, point. Uh, that means recognizing your limits ex ante and understanding how much cash you have to burn, <laughs> let's say. Uh, instead of focusing on what you might gain eventually, because as there is real uncertainty, you cannot know if you're going to make it. I will move quickly. Uh, after forgetting in the IRR and NPV uh, into the next one. Uh, and least stakeholders really committed to act, to action. This is the crazy quilt principle. Uh, what are the action question? How can you act as a convener? A convener is, a, is someone uh, appealing, attracting, inviting stakeholders are committed to transform this shared reality so that means interacting flexibly and even by voting a stakeholder a client may become an investor or a, a supplier uh, to engage them and play and this is so relevant and simon is particularly insightful on that sense play with ambiguity and avoid frontal goal conflict i want this i want this i need to play a little bit and say oh it could be this i think it could be that well let's see let's move on and then we will see by our own when the times come comes forgetting so much cost benefits analysis rival profiling that is at the end uh maybe just paralysis by analysis the four principles the lemonade principle lemons for lemonade means taking uh contingency as reality checks opportunities and not feedback but feed forward uh in term of asking yourself how could you take advantage of contingencies as catch up opportunities instead as a uh, obstacles or difficulties or um, challenges to uh, to your work so instead of trying to defend ideal plans illusory plans i uh, take advantage of those opportunities in that sense contingencies are ways of accommodating your perceptions to what uh, simon calls inadequacies in data Uh, in that sense contingencies upgrade your time and attention limit we have so many limitation in that sense so let's accept and take the new means resources and opportunities 
that uh, contingencies bring. Let's make lemonade with the lemons. Uh, the fifth one is act to transform again your reality. The same word comes with us. So this is the point is, what can we control of the environment instead of predicting, trying to predict what's gonna happen? So the question, the action question here is think a little bit, how could you transform your own reality in your favor? And this is exactly what you have done with those uh, startups with, with almost no money or with just very limited amount of money. So let's avoid the trap of taking the context as a given or the future as predictable. And let's concentrate uh, and trust in the human capacity as the engine to transform the world and create opportunities. Forgetting just riding the techie wave, the social wave or the economic trend. Um, we can do much more than just riding the wave, the waves. Uh, we can transform the world. You and us, we're transforming the world in this conversation. We have touching so many lives. So who says? It's just people here and there. We're really uh, much more connected, much more connected than what we, we think, and we should take advantage of that. Well, those are the, are the five uh, principles we have been uh, discussing. Uh, and those are the mental models uh, we would like you to, to consider for, for your life. So the mental models, I would like with Magdalena to invite you to dare to explore your own mental models to accept reality, but at the same time, uh, to feel empowered, to transform it for good. This is our message from the way we think, from the mountains, from Pakistan and Chile, and with the different methods that the entrepreneur use. And I, you, I remind you once again, uh, to perhaps may help you to, to, to keep it in mind uh, in terms of being able to dare to change the way we see life, to be able to face inflection point associated with uncertainty, to mobilize a crazy quilt of stakeholders, to accept ambiguity and be able to tolerate the different goals and not be too specific too early with your goals. And of course, transcend your limitations. Those are the five ones. And in some way, you, Shahid, Magdalena, all the friends that are with us today students and colleagues, we're all writing again our history. So we may change the way we think. And I think this, this is one of the best opportunities we have in the life we are living nowadays. So with this, I just leave you with the sense of legacy that you entrepreneurial endeavors may have, thinking in terms of a legacy in the part of your life's work that may endure through times, like the entrepreneurs that Magdalena has shown us, and also all those revolutions that have changed the way we think. So the enduring story you're writing as you live your life. And I put again the legacy questions. What sort of life are we living? 
right? So I thank you so much for this opportunity and remain open with Magdalena to all the questions and commentary you may have. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, my friend Gonzalez, talking about the mind maps and these five pictures, in addition to these four points, in addition to the effectuation theory. And, uh, the, the, and I, I learned something new, uh, that in the bird in hand, we have to know where you are. So that is something new coming up. <laughs> and uh, I, I really interesting to know that you're adding this. I really appreciate your reference to Pakistan, Manjodaro, Harappa, and our 3,000 year old history here. And I appreciate Nadilina is a professor of history and she was able to relate about the old agriculture revolution and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of people here and uh, so we can ask some questions and uh, sure. uh, can you please, um, a lot of people are thanking uh, you for a wonderful session and excellent explanation and a different perspective on the chat box. So you are, be, you are being uh, mentoring a lot of family businesses here in Chile, uh, Argentina, I think. So uh, what, what, what are the key successful tips? What are the challenges being faced by family businesses in this part of the world? Can you just share, are they similar? Uh, yes, I will share you my, my, my own views and then I will, I will pass the, the word to Magdalena who is the, who is the managing director of the, of the main Chilean family business association. So okay. she may also have a lot of interesting things to share with us. From my side, uh, I would say, uh, families are really uh, staying alive, <laughs> like the song, I would say, uh, in terms of, of uh, going through this with a sense of purpose, with a okay. care for their communities, the stakeholders that are real, that are really uh, admiring, I really admire them on that sense. Uh, some of them have very hard time but, but they are playing the, 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 this unknown game in a way to take care of the whole team, the whole family, of course, the whole organization. Instead of laying off uh, employees one after the other one, uh, they're trying to keep them together, to keep the team. They may have to do sacrifices, all of them, uh, the owners, the, the directors, the managers, and the, and the collaborators, but still, they're, they're fighting for, for that. And uh, we have the case of a Chilean family entrepreneur who owns shopping centers uh, for, for just small SMEs, small and medium enterprises. And what they're doing, they're not uh, charging the rent for the next three months uh, to give them some, some second air, let's say, uh, for, for, for the future. And, in the second hand, they are giving them legal assistance because they are having a lot of trouble, those SMEs who are their tenants. And they're also helping them take advantage of the credit that the Chilean government is offering them. So I think this is a, a, a great example how some families are acting. Magdalena, I pass the, the, the word to you. No, just to complete, uh, I'm very proud of family business, not just Chilean, around the world. Uh, I have been looking that they have a strong courage to move on, to confront this reality. They and the courage. values of the family business are still present. They are still present uh, and maintaining this. Actually, the trust with the workers the, the legacy 